Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our presentation, Getting to Know the State Library of Florida. Today, we'll delve into the distinctive and invaluable features that set the State Library of Florida apart as a crucial resource for state employees, academics, scholars, citizen researchers, librarians, and anyone else with an interest in Florida. We'll have time for questions at the end, but feel free to send those in at any time. I'm Michaela Westmoreland, and I work as the library's Florida Collection and Outreach Librarian for the State Library. I'm responsible for curating and overseeing the Florida Special Collection, while also creating content and participating in outreach initiatives to promote our valuable resources to both state employees and the public. Additionally, I oversee our library's Twitter account and dedicate several hours a day to responding to inquiries through our reference services. And I'm Josie Schreeder Malafato. I am our electronic resources librarian. So I administer our catalog and databases, which I'll be talking about later, record our usage statistics, and like Michaela, serve on the reference desk and oversee our Facebook account. Today we will discuss the origins and purpose of the State Library, as well as the role of the State Library in preserving Florida history and making it available to the public both physically and digitally. From our Florida Special Collection, one of the largest Florida historical and cultural collections in the world, to our extensive collection of state publications, there's so much to see and learn about Florida from the State Library. We will then go into how to get a state library card and how to access all the services and resources that we provide to you and that you can access from your office, home, or anywhere. So some history. The origins of the state library trace back to the establishment of a legislative library when Florida became a state in 1845. Our modern form came into being in 1925 with the establishment of the State Library as its own entity and with the hiring of William T. Cash, that's the gentleman you see on the left there, as our first official state librarian in 1927. We've gone through lots more changes since then. After several years in the old capital, the library was moved to the basement of the Supreme Court, as you can see in that middle picture. And in the 1970s, the R.A. Gray Building was built across the street from there. And this has been our main home ever since, along with our smaller Capitol Branch Library located on the seventh floor of the current Capitol Building. But also, a large percentage of our patrons never have to visit us at all. Many of our collections are available online, and if not, can either be mailed or digitized. This enables us to serve people across the state and to continue providing services, even when the RE Gray Building is closed, such as it was during the peak of COVID-19. Even though we didn't really have an organized state library until the 1920s, parts of the collection go back much further. For example, we have every edition of the laws of Florida going back to 1822, the first meetings of the legislature after Florida territory became part of the United States and a full 23 years before statehood. Some of the other items in our Florida collection go back even further into the Spanish and British colonial periods. What you see on the slide here is actually the 1845 law organizing the books owned by the new state government into a state library. And this here is the 1925 law that established the state library's modern form led by a state librarian. The library has had to move several times and gone through several more administrative changes since we were founded. As our collection has grown, we have remained committed to doing our very best to preserve this state's multifaceted history. The State Library has two missions. We serve as the information provider to Florida state government agencies, including the Florida legislature. We have a group of services that we provide specifically and exclusively to you as state employees that we will discuss a bit later in the webinar. The neat thing about these services is that you do not have to come to Tallahassee to use them. We bring the library to you. Our services are available statewide right from your office. Our second mission is to collect, preserve, and make available Florida's published history to researchers and the public. Our collections include a variety of types of materials in many different formats that will be discussed in the next few slides. So now let's take a look at each of our main collections. 
The Florida Special Collection is one of the largest collections of published material from and about Florida in the world, with more than 60,000 items spanning the five centuries since European contact. Unlike some of our other materials, but like the State Archives files, the Florida Collection is limited to on-site use because many of the items in it are rare and irreplaceable. It also includes a lot more types of materials than you might expect. Aside from books and magazines, we have maps, many of them more than 100 years old, local government planning documents, and city directories spanning nearly a century. We also have more than 20,000 rolls of microfilmed newspapers, including full runs of major Florida papers, such as the St. Petersburg Tampa Bay Times and the Florida Times Union. Lastly, a huge part of the collections are the odds and ends that we in the library call ephemera. Tourism brochures from across the state, campaign mailers, and other political ads going back to the 19th century, and all sorts of posters and flyers from public health alerts to business announcements. Even though the collection is non-circulating, we have lots of online resources to guide you in researching with it that you can access from your office or home, which will be shown to you a bit later in the webinar. New items for the Florida collection are largely works of published history. In many cases, these secondary sources were written with research assistance from our librarians and archivists. We also have some Florida-themed fiction titles available, as that is also an important part of the culture of the state. Part of our online resources also include overviews of different historical and cultural topics. Some of these are among the most popular resources on our entire website. Each one will list books and other resources, including many found online, that provide in-depth information on that topic drawn from our collections, those of the State Archives, and more. Now, I'm sure some of you are familiar with Florida Memory, which is the Division of Library and Information Services public history site. Florida Memory is run by a special team within the State Archives, but it is a joint project of both the State Archives and the State Library and features digitized items and historical information from both of our collections. And as you might expect, the majority of items and historical information of the library materials of, on Florida Memory come out of the Florida collection and primarily include four types of items, political, tourism-based, Great Depression era works progress administration records, and most of all, maps. While Florida Memory only has a small fraction of our maps online, they provide much higher resolution, zoomable scans that allow you to look at them in close detail right from your computer. We have a wide variety of types of maps, from county maps of the state to specific locales and geographic features, to bird's eye views, and you can browse these all online. But we also have many more that aren't online, which you can still search in our catalog and request copies from. Florida Memory also holds a collection of broadsides, things like posters, notices, and single page ads, and brochures, which come from our ephemera collection, a subcollection of the Florida collection, which is stored in what are called vertical files file folders organized by location. We collect and preserve these as they provide historical information about events. While this type of material might seem disposable, they document cultural culture and events, and we have hundreds if not thousands of brochures in our ephemera collection. Another way we're working on making Florida's history and heritage available is by digitizing materials. We have our own collection on the Internet Archive, a platform that provides an easy to access collection of historical state publications, public domain ebooks, and more that we've scanned and put online. We've been retroactively scanning many of our print state publications, including the entire Laws of Florida, as well as a number of public domain items, such as antique books from the Florida collection. This serves a dual purpose. It makes them available online for free anywhere and anytime, which saves both you and us a lot of effort. And it also means that once it's been scanned, we rarely have to handle the often very old and fragile original copies. The other biggest and most unique part of our collections is our state publications. These are the documents and other media produced by the state government for such purposes as public outreach, official reporting, et cetera. This is distinct from the public records created as a part of internal day-to-day -day business, which are either held in the state archives or more often by agencies themselves. Our items in this collection go back to the acts of the territorial legislature in the 1820s, 
right after the U.S. took control of Florida from Spain, all the way forward to, in some cases, this very week. Once again, the purpose of our state publications program is to preserve and maintain access to these publications in some cases long after the agency that created them no longer exists, which is the reason why there is a requirement in the Florida statutes and admin code that all state agencies provide the library with copies of anything they publish, though the number of copies depends on the total number produced. But this also means that agencies themselves don't have to worry about storing extras. You can just send any copies our way and we'll distribute them across the state as part of the State Publications Depository Program. This is a network of libraries across the state that makes state publications available in person to patrons in that area. Currently, we have 21 member libraries all over the peninsula and Panhandle. The purpose of the depository network is to ensure that government information is accessible regardless of where you are in the state. This also applies to born digital e-docs. We go out and download these from state websites and have a special tool to enable agencies to upload very large files to us. We then put the, their documents onto a backup archive server so that they can stay online through numerous website changes. And if your agency wants to just link to us, we can even save you, you can even save yourself the bandwidth and server space. The state library has been required to accept and maintain reports from entities who are required by law to create those reports. This includes compiling a list of statutorily required reports and posting it to our website. You can find more information on our new webpage, Reports Required by Florida Statute, through the link you see here, which includes a list of required reports by statute and a tutorial on submitting your reports. We also have a new searchable repository for these reports. Starting April 15th, 2024, we will compile a bibliography of reports received in the prior three months. These will be available online and also distributed to the governor, the president of the Senate, and the Speaker of the House of Representatives. We are also a selective federal depository. So that means that we have a lot of documents from the federal government as well, including one fourth of all federal publications. These can be as heady and dry as a congressional transcript or as fun as a NASA produced jigsaw puzzle of the moon. But we mostly focus on only collecting the federal documents that are of direct importance to Florida, dealing with issues such as public health, the environment, immigration, things that affect our jobs and lives every day. And last, but very, very far from least, we have our circulating collection. These are the books that you can check out from the state library, just like any other library. Until recently, members of the public needed to visit us in Tallahassee to get a card and borrow books, as our remote services, such as databases and book delivery, are for state employees only. While we focus on acquiring new books to serve the needs of state agency employees specifically, anyone can apply for a library card and borrow books from our collection. We have separate online library card registration forms for state employees, Florida residents, and library staff. The RA Gray Building, where we are located, is open to visitors from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday through Friday for both state employees and general patrons. So if you're in Tallahassee and you'd like to swing on by, we'd be more than happy to see you. And now I'll pass it on to my colleague, Josie, to give you more information on some of our online resources. Now that you're familiar with what we collect and why, let's go over what we can do for you. These are our services for state agency employees, and now we'll go over how to access them. Firstly, we can assist you with all of your research. Whether you need help getting started or are looking for something specific, our library staff are available to provide you with that help. This can pr include putting together a list of sources, locating articles in one of our research databases, locating a statute, etc. Just call or email us and we will provide whatever research help you need. We'll provide contact info for us later in the presentation. The first step to using any of our resources is to get a state library card. 
This is not your public library card. It's specifically for the state library. Either you can apply for your library card online, or if you happen to be in Tallahassee, you can visit us and get one in person. If you apply for your card through our website, we will send you a virtual library card in your email that works just like a physical card. To apply online, click the link on our homepage and then enter your state email and submit, click Submit to confirm that you are a state employee. This will take you to the sign up form. You'll receive an email in one to three working days with your library card number, information about your PIN, and instructions for accessing our online services and collections. If you don't receive it in that time, please contact our circulation department at 850-245-6680. Now let's look at our catalog. This is where you find our collections, including electronic state and federal publications, print books, ebooks, and more. There's even an article in citation search that searches our e-resource databases. Once you have your library card, you can log into the catalog to manage your account and place books on hold. Once again, you do not have to travel to Tallahassee to check out books. We'll mail them right to your office at no charge. Within the catalog, we also have a series of information portals designed around topics relevant to the jobs of state agencies. You can find links for getting started in your research on the subjects, as well as key resources which help you dig a little deeper with links to databases, reports, eBooks, and more. We also have a set of research guides that provide books, articles, and more on related topics. Also from the catalog, we have our current alerts and table of content service. The table of content service allows you to subscribe to updates from journals and magazines we've subscribed to in print. Just sign up, and when a new issue is released, you'll get the table of contents in your email, and then you can reply with the articles you want, and we'll send those to you. Once again, this service is free. You can also sign up for table of contents and subject search alerts through our e-resource databases, journal publishers, and a website called Journal TOCs. Just follow the information on our website. In addition to our own materials, you also have access to libraries across the state with your state library card. If you need something we don't have, you can search for it in Flynn Share It and request it from another library, and then we'll deliver it to you just like our own collection. It's very easy and I've used this service myself. We also have an article request form that you can use to request articles from journals that we don't subscribe to. Just like with Flynn Share It, we'll get it for you from another library and send it right to your email. To find this service, go to the Services for State Employees page I showed you earlier on our website and click on Request Materials Unavailable at the State Library. Okay, so now let's look at our e-resources. I am going to pause sharing for just a moment and then take us live. Okay, we subscribe to dozens of research databases for you, and as a state employee, you have access to all of them with your state library card, whether at your desk, at home, or on the move. To access them, click the Search Our Databases link on our Services for State Employees page. So, right here where it says Search Our Databases. And, or you can go to galepages.com slash state library of FL. For an example of searches, uh, searching in these databases, uh, we are live at the portal. So to start with, let's look at Academic Search Premier. This is a general purpose database of academic journals on a variety of subjects. We'll search for Florida and environment. And we will search full text peer reviewed articles with those little boxes select. We're going to deselect apply equivalent subjects though, so we only get things that match our specific search terms. All right. 
let's look at a result. Click HTML full text to read the article in the database or PDF full text to download it. You also have other options there for citing the article, saving it to your EBSCO account, which is automatically created when you first log into the database, etc. Now let's go back to the database's portal and look at JSTOR. Let's try a search for manatee. So click on the title to view the article in your browser, in the database. There's also more information about it, including the abstract and references, etc. And then there's also a button to download the article. So you can save it. For more detailed demonstration of searching in JSTOR, we have a tutorial on that. And if you ever need help with any of our databases, just call our email. We also have two collections of eBooks that you can check out with your state library card. These can be found in our catalog by selecting eBook collection from the dropdown or just searching by title. You can also search within the eBooks databases, as you can see on the slide, which you can get to from our eResources portal. We have two eBook databases, Downless and EBSCO eBooks. EBSCO eBooks can be read using the Adobe Digital Editions app, and Boundless eBooks can be read using the Boundless app, or either can be read in your web browser. If you have any questions about eBooks, once again, feel free, please feel free to contact us by phone or email. We also have a set of video tutorials that go over many of the things discussed today and more, such as free continuing education for nurses and social workers. These are available on our YouTube channel, along with recordings of webinars like this one. And with that, we'll wrap up. Remember, if you work for the state, we work for you. All right, does anyone have any questions? We'll stay on for a few minutes in case anyone does. And also we will send you the slides and link in a follow-up email. Oh, question. Okay, so we've got a question. Good morning, can books from the State Library be downloaded onto the Kindle? Unfortunately not, we do not, um, uh, our, our, neither of our ebook vendors support the Amazon Kindle platform, unfortunately. Um. Regarding ebooks, can I have an ebook sent to a personal email in lieu of my state email? Okay, so you need to use your state email to sign up for your library card. But once you log in, you can log in on your personal device and have them uh, uh, downloaded to your personal device if you so choose. You just need to use your state library card to log in that you signed up for with your state email. Uh, we've also got a lot of thank yous and you're very welcome. Can teachers access primary sources, someone says. Um, our e-resources um, that, that I was talking about before are available at state employees, but we have a bunch of primary sources in our collection. FloridaMemory.com has a ton of primary sources that are available online including uh, resources specifically for teachers. 
Uh, and uh, if you need help getting anything from any of our collections, just call us at the numbers on the screen or email us at the email address on the screen, and we'd be happy to help you find whatever you need, even if you are not a state employee. How long following a publication of a newspaper does it? Okay, so our US news stream database is updated uh, every day with the current issues. Um, it does not have scans of articles, just plain text, but we do get the articles as they come out. Uh, there is also um, historical newspaper databases as well, including ProQuest Historical Newspapers, New York Times, newspapers.com. Those it's going to take a little bit longer to get there. I think historical newspapers is about uh, starts at about 10 years ago and goes back from there. Will this session be available after today? I missed most of it, unfortunately. Yes, the session is being recorded and will be sent out in a follow-up email. If we have access to other state neighbor newspapers like the New York Times, yes. You have access through uh, to the New York Times database as well as the U.S. News Stream and U.S. Major Dailies databases, which includes newspapers including the Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal, the Los Angeles Times, etc. I wanted to simply thank you and ask if you could look up my library card info. I've got it filed away in my archive Outlook files. Uh, not going to do that on the recording, but if you uh, shoot us an email afterwards at info.dos.myflorida.com, I will happily look up your card information for you. If you've never received a physical library card, where can we get the card? You can come in per for a physical library card. You need to come in person to the RA Gray building. Uh, the second, the library is located on the second floor. We'll have a paper form for you to fill out, and then we'll hand you an actual physical library card. Could you further describe the option to access other libraries throughout the state through the state library site? Sure, we have a resource sharing platform uh, called Flynn Share It that I mentioned. Uh, I didn't do a demo of it in the presentation, um, but we uh, it works very similarly to the library catalog. You search for uh, the books that you want and then it, the software goes out and searches the catalogs of all of the other libraries that are in the network. And uh, that is, we also uh, can um, find them for you. Uh, if you'd prefer, we do have a, a form where you can just submit a request and we can look for it. And thank you to Kathy, who has sent links to the table of content service, the databases portal, and the, the Flynn share it into the chat. Do you have any book or ebook on well surveillance in Florida? I would have to look into that. Uh, if you, uh, again, uh, if you'd like to uh, shoot us an email or call us after the presentation is over, uh, that would be good also, uh, because uh, I don't know off the top of my head. Do you have magazines to lend such as the New Yorker and the Atlantic? Okay, so we can't physically lend the the magazines, but we do have, as I said, our table of content service that includes those titles. Uh, it does include the New Yorker and the Atlantic, so if you email us, uh, we will email you the table of contents from those magazines, and then you tell us what articles you want, and we'll email them to you. Does the library have psychological assessment manuals? If so, where can that be found? I am not aware that we do, but again, uh, if you uh, use Ask a Librarian, call us or email us. Is the State Library server down today? I'm having trouble logging in. The error message in indicates there's a server communication issue. 
Uh, I have not had trouble getting in. Uh, so it, it seems to be up on our end. Uh, if you continue to have problems, uh, contact us and I can look into that for you a little bit more uh, in a little bit more detail. Okay. What is my favorite feature of the state library system? Oh, that is a tough question. What do you think is your most underutilized feature? Actually, I would say that the uh, the Flint Share at the resource sharing platform where you can borrow books from other libraries is not used as much as I would like. And uh, I think it's a great uh, service. We've also got. Uh, uh, I I also just think our our regular reference services are pretty great. Like you can call or email someone, and and there, you will always reach a human being. You will always reach a, a someone who is willing to help to the best of their ability. And I I think that is uh, something that uh, we all should appreciate. We've got a follow-up question from the guy that was asking about books on well surveillance. I will, since you put your email in the question box, I'll write that down and uh, uh, follow up with you by email. Any more questions? <laughs> <laughs> 